Hey guys, Brent Hull Build Show, talking today about the Gothic Revival. We got a cool little history lesson of what Gothic Revival is, what it's a revival of. We're also going to show you a project we did a number of years ago in Florida, a Gothic Revival house using Architectural Salvage. Fun, cool project. Going to walk you through that whole process today on the Build Show. Okay, so we're talking about the Gothic Revival style, right? We're in Victorian architecture. Remember, we started Georgian, Federal, Greek Revival, and then the, that Victorian era, right? And all these styles of Victorian architecture. Now, what is it a revival of? Well, the Gothic period of architecture really is 11 to 1500. So that's when like Notre Dame was built right in France. And so you see in that style of architecture really an engineering marvel in many respects. Really, uh, they figured out how to build big, tall walls and then they had pierced the walls with glass. So it's a revival of that period because that period of architecture was so beautiful, right? You have all these uh, features that come from this style, for example you have the Gothic arches, right? That kind of pointed arch that goes up. And you see it inside Notre Dame where you see these windows that are that are held up by this Gothic arch. You have clustered columns, columns that go up and there's a bunch of columns that are clustered together. You have ribbing in those vaults. They would support that vault with the, what's called a rib, right? All of these different uh, features, tracery in the windows, right? Tracery is this uh, framework that the glass would sometimes go in. So. That's the Gothic period, right? And by the 1830s, 1840s, you begin to see a Gothic revival, a looking back at that style. Augusta Pugin was a, was a very famous architect who was really a proponent of the Gothic style. And Westminster Palace, which was burnt down and then rebuilt, became part of his design theme and his ideas, very Gothic. In America, we have a number of different iterations of it, okay? So there's the whole collegiate Gothic deal where you have a bunch of these uh, Ivy League schools um, mostly looking back to the Oxfords and Cambridges, looking back at that ideal period of education, right, and trying to emulate that. At Princeton University, you have this uh, this beautiful eating hall um, done in the English Gothic style. So you have English paneling, you have the tracery in the windows. Uh, there's this open hallway before you go inside it where you see this beautiful tracery um, looking out into the courtyard, right? And so a lot of really beautiful features. Now, in the style of the home, okay, you begin to see all of these historical features show up. And this is a great example in this house where you see barge boards, right? That's that gable end of the house where that decorative fretwork is done in the outside of the house. You have hood moldings. Hood moldings go over top of the window and they, they kick out at the end. They're kind of these little ears. You have turret moldings, right? The little castle type moldings where those moldings go back and forth. You see it over the porch. There's tracery all over this house. You see it in the balustrade, that pretty balustrade over the over the front door. Uh, and then you get into all the Gothic symbolism, right? So the trifold is three circles coming together. Uh, the quatrefoil is four circles coming together, right? There's a lot of religious symbolism, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit for the three, the four apostles, all kinds of different things going on that make this style very romantic and beautiful. The most famous uh, Gothic Revival House is Lyndhurst, which it's up in New York. It's in the Hudson Valley. Uh, beautiful, beautiful house where, again, we see all those features. You see turret moldings over the porch. You see the column clusters. You see finials. You see hood moldings over windows. And if you go inside, right, if you look inside this house, you see all these crazy features. And here's where we're seeing a uh, collaboration of the post-industrial, right, after the Civil War, ability to do great things with wood where you are doing this tracery and building these beams and the wood is going crazy. It's all hardwoods, right? All those things we learned uh, that were made available because of the Industrial Revolution happen in these rooms, happens in uh, this, this dining room, for instance, at uh, Lindhurst. Now, we did a fun project in Florida. Um, we were, they had some height restrictions. They, they couldn't do everything they wanted to do on the outside. And so we ended up doing some, a bunch of fun uh, Gothic revival details, the barge boards, finials, a uh, bunch of decorative features that are uh, show up in this house. We have tracery over uh, and, and barge boards over this gable end. We had this beautiful little garage where we were able to build almost like a dollhouse feature. All were really cool, fun details. Now, the way the project started is they found some architectural salvage in New York. 
I think it was a cathedral that was being torn down. I think in Brooklyn, 1870s, right? But you see in this millwork all this incredible uh, uh, Gothic work, right? The Gothic arches. You see a balustrade there at the top um, that we were able to reincorporate into this stair of this house. So you'll see it here in our shop where we're actually working on it. We're actually building it and putting it together, taking things apart, cutting things up, and then rebuilding them, reassembling until we were able to put it into their house at the top of the stair, right? So repurposing this architectural salvage was the design impetus that kind of brought the thing together. It ended up allowing us to do a lot of really fun things. You see in this bedroom upstairs, we're able to do the ribbing in the ceilings, right? We're able to do these big archways going between rooms, um, all kinds of fun details. Now, we were also able to do uh, the doors. And so the doors uh, have this feature called a spandrel, right? Right over the top where those things go up, you'll see what's called a spandrel. And they're, they're very similar to this here, um, where that arch comes up, it ends up, because you've got a square opening, the arch comes up. This little area here is called a spandrel, right? This is an English Gothic door opening that we have, and you notice the same kinds of spandrels over this. Sometimes these are very decorated. Sometimes these are, um, they're, they're much more ornate, right? Especially around the front door, there's flower motifs. The oak leaf motif is a very popular Gothic revival detail. So the spandrel was ended up being a fun detail. Now, one of the challenges we had was the moldings. How do we create moldings? Now, if you remember in the, in the uh, classical style, the column, the pedestal, the cornice, all are things that are used on moldings, right? So the cornice mold from, a, uh, from the classical style ends up determining the dentils and the modillions and all the different details that come out of, out of that style. With the Gothic Revival and the Gothic columns and the Gothic base, you have all these drippy, uh, beaded, uh, kind of crazy moldings that don't really work into a, a design very well. Now, what we did was uh, we created a base molding. And so if you look at uh, the doorways there, you'll see that uh, we didn't have a lot of room for a big four or five inch wide casing, if you imagine the door over here. And so we ended up having like a little column cluster that runs up around the door, a bead that runs around the opening. We created a plinth block because you need a plinth block to carry the big bases that happen in Victorian style houses. But if you look at the edge of these moldings, the bead here, the beak molding there, another bead, uh, three reeded details here. Um, Victorian, right? This is a kind of a pretty typical Victorian base, not only because of its size, but because of the amount of decoration, but we we're also able to incorporate some of those uh, uh, base molding details you saw from the original catalogs, right? We were able to put them into a house like this. Probably the funnest thing we did was we worked on this entry stair. We made this beautiful finial. We picked up the barge boards from the outside of the house. We picked up the the main entry piece, right? And we kind of created our own little newel. Now, about halfway through it, we were sending the client pictures and they <laughs> sent an email back, hey, do you think we could make that into a dollhouse? And so you'll notice as you look in there that you'll see little furniture and lights and different things like that because we made it into a dollhouse. Now, the son <laughs> wanted to be included in the game and he ended up wanting a Hot Wheel track in the outside railing so we actually kicked the railing out against the wall wide enough so he had a little hot wheel track fun project but it captures in the entry of this little um uh, of this house this beautiful details in the stairs that captures from the outside you're walking in you're seeing this thing and what's happening on the outside is happening on the inside you've got great architectural salvage all very fun. Okay, so the Gothic Revival, right? Not a lot of people clamoring for the Gothic Revival today, but the influence of it is very important as you look at architecture in general and design in general. Be on the lookout for the Gothic Revival as you go to look at churches, you go to visit these great schools, right? Look for these this infusion of this style because it's prevalent, it's important, and you need to understand it. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, sign up for the newsletter. I'm Brent Hull, thanks for watching.